Hi. I'm glad you're still with me. So having known heat, temperature, the conversion and temperature scales, today I'll introduce you to something which we call the fixed temperatures of the thermometer. So we've known that the thermometer is an instrument used for measuring temperature. On the thermometer, there are what we call fixed temperatures or fixed points. We could rather call it reference temperatures. We have the upper fixed points and we have the lower fixed points. By definition, upper fixed points is the temperature of steam from pure boiling water at standard atmospheric pressure of 760 mm of mercury. Again, upper fixed point is the temperature of steam from pure boiling water at standard atmospheric pressure. In essence, you can say the upper fixed point on the thermometer is the steam point. Then we have the lower fixed point. The lower fixed point is the temperature of pure melting ice at standard atmospheric pressure of 760 mm of mercury. Again, lower fixed point is the temperature of pure melting ice. So, while the upper fixed point is the steam point, the lower fixed point is the melting point. Remember, we have our three temperature scales. The Celsius scale, the Fahrenheit scale, and the Kelvin scale. On the thermometer, each of these scales has its own upper fixed points and lower fixed points. For the Celsius scale, the upper fixed point is 100 degrees Celsius, while the lower fixed point is 0 degrees Celsius. For the Fahrenheit scale, the upper fixed point is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, while the lower fixed point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And for the Kelvin scale, the upper fixed point is 273 Kelvin, while the lower fixed point is 273 Kelvin. So we are all familiar with the Celsius scale, where we know that water boils at 100 degrees centigrade, while ice melts at 0 degrees centigrade. So you can say that when water boils at 100 degrees centigrade on the Celsius scale, on the Fahrenheit scale, it boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, while on the Kelvin scale, it boils at 273 degrees 373 Kelvin. Again, it's worth to note that it's what to know as fundamental interval. Fundamental interval is actually the difference between the upper fixed points and the lower fixed points. For the Celsius scale, say the fundamental interval is simply 100 minus 0, which will give us 100. So, the, with the fundamental interval, for the Celsius scale is 100. Why for the Fahrenheit scale, subtracting that 2 from 212, we give us 180 degrees Fahrenheit. For the Kelvin scale, you can simply subtract 273 from 373, and that also gives us 100. So on the Celsius scale, we have 100 as a fundamental interval, 100 as a fundamental interval for the Kelvin scale, and then 180 degrees Fahrenheit at the fundamental interval on the Fahrenheit scale. This is simply our fundamental interval. Having known this and being familiar with this right now, I think you cannot jump into solving questions involving these thermometer scales. We have questions like this, which we mostly see in our exams. It reads, a 40 Celsius thermometer reads 0.7 degrees Celsius at the melting point of ice and 99.5 degrees Celsius at the boiling point of water at normal temperate pressure. What is the correct temperature when it reaches 30 degrees Celsius? At what temperature will its reading be exactly correct? Looking at this question, you first of all understand the question. Then we are told that this 40 thermometer reads 0.7 degrees Celsius at melting point of ice. That is the lower fixed point. Lower fixed point is reading 0.7. Why it should have read 0 degree Celsius? Then we have the upper fixed point reading 99.5 degree Celsius. Why normally it should have been 100 degree Celsius? Then the question is, what is the correct temperature when it reads 30 degree Celsius? Simple that we asked to do. We are asked to find the correct temperature 
on the correct thermometer when the 40 thermometer reads 30 degree Celsius. To answer this question, you have to represent this question in drawing. So let's assume this is our correct thermometer and this is our 40 thermometer. Then the correct thermometer should have 100 degrees Celsius as the upper fixed point and 0 degrees Celsius as the lower fixed point. While the 41 has 99.5 degrees Celsius as the upper fixed point and 0.7 degrees Celsius as the lower fixed point. Then the first question states, at what temperature will it read 30 degrees Celsius? So we're looking for the temperature on the correct thermometer when the 40 thermometer reads 30 degrees Celsius. This represents the question. The 40 thermometer and the correct thermometer. When 99.5, the correct should be 100 degrees Celsius. So at 30 degrees Celsius, what should be the actual value on the correct thermometer? To solve this question, we have a simple method we use. The upper fixed point minus the lower fixed point. This is 100 minus 0. Remember, it's a fundamental interval over the middle one minus the lower fixed point. That's theta minus 0. Remember, theta here is the value we are looking for. Equal to, you still have to do the same thing to the other thermometer. Thus, we have 99.5 minus the lower fixed point, 0 0.7 over 30 minus 0 0.7. That's the middle one minus the lower one. 100 minus 0 simply will give you 100. Theta minus 0 will as well give you theta. 99.5 minus 0 0.7 will give you 98.8 while 30 minus 0 0.7 will give us 29.3 If we have this, we cannot simply cross multiply So 29.3 times 100 will give us 2930 equal to 98.8 times theta will give us 98.8 theta. We are looking for theta. Our theta will now be 2930 over 98.8. So dividing, this will give us 29.65 degree Celsius. Simply, that approximately, our theta is equal to 29.7 degrees Celsius. So in essence, while the correct thermometer reads 29.7, the 41 will read 30 degrees Celsius. Remember the question states, at what, moment, at what temperature will its reading be 30 degrees Celsius? That is at 29.7 degrees Celsius. Also question is, at what temperature will its reading be exactly correct? Remember, we have our upper fixed point as 99.5 and our lower fixed point as 0 0.7. Now, the question is asking us, at what temperature will its reading be exactly correct? We are actually asked to find the temperature where the value on the 40 thermometer is the same as the value on the correct thermometer. And we don't know the value yet. So let's assume the value is theta. So tracing to the correct one, the value we have here will be theta. So this is our presentation. We have presented this thing. From here, we can now solve. Still find the same method, which says that 100, 100 minus 0 all over theta minus 0 is equal to 99.5 minus 0 0.7 over theta minus 0 0.7. This will give us 100 over theta 
equal to 98.8 over theta minus 0. Point. We are left with 100 over theta is equal to 98.8 over theta minus 0. 0.7. We shall cross multiply and that is 98.8 times theta which is 98.8 theta equal to 100 times theta minus 0. 0.7. We shall go further. 98.8 theta is equal to 100 times theta, which is 100 theta minus 100 times 0 0.7, which is 70. Having got to this stage, then the like terms can be collected. This coming over, while right, this goes over, which is 70 is equal to 100 theta minus 98.8 theta. Believe you are still with me. 70 is equal to 1.2 theta. So what's our theta? Our theta is 70 divided by 1.2, which will give us 58.33 degree Celsius. Approximately 58.3 degree Celsius. Let's recap. We are asked at what temperature will the reading be exactly correct? In essence, at what temperature will they have the same value? Which represented as what? Theta. Theta here, theta here. So, following the same method, upper fixed point minus the lower fixed point, which is 100 minus 0, theta minus 0, that's the middle one, minus the lower fixed point, equal to 99.5 minus 0 0.7 over theta minus 0 0.7. Subtracting 0 from 100 will give us 100. And subtracting 0 from theta will as well give us theta. The same way, subtracting 0 0.7 from 99.5 will give us 98.8. You can't subtract further here. This is theta, an unknown, and this is 0 0.7. That's why we stopped here. So looking at this, there's an equality sign here. So you cross multiply. When you cross multiply, 0.98.8 we multiply theta and that gives us 98.8 theta. The same way, 100 will be multiplying zero theta and 0 0.7. That's why we bracketed it. So 98.8 theta is equal to 100 times theta, which will give us 100 theta minus 100 times 0 0.7, which will give us 70. So collecting like terms, minus 70 coming over, that gives us 70. 98.8 theta going over, that gives us minus 98.8 theta. Thus, we have 70 is equal to 100 theta minus 98.8 theta. They are like this because they have the same unknown, is theta. 100 theta minus 98.8 theta will give us 1.2 theta. So, 70 is equal to 1.2 theta. What we have to find the unknown, which is theta. So, let it both sides by the coefficient of the unknown, which is 1.2. We are now left with theta is equal to 70 over 1.2, which will give us 58.33 degree Celsius. Approximately 58.3 degree Celsius. So, you can now see that why the force thermometer reads 58.3 degree Celsius, the great thermometer will as well read 58.3 degree Celsius. All right, we have the second question, which states a platinum resistance to thermometer records 3.0 ohms at 0 degrees Celsius and 8.0 ohms at 100 degrees Celsius. If it records 6.0 ohms in a certain environment, find the temperature of the medium. From here, you can see that we are dealing with another type of thermometer, which is known as resistance thermometer. Please, for your own good, you can go for the entry reading types of thermometer, of which resistance thermometer is part of them. So, 
from this question, we are told that this resistance thermometer records 3.0 ohms at the lower fixed point, that is 0 degrees Celsius, and 8.0 ohms at the upper fixed point, which is 100 degrees Celsius. Then the question states, if it records 6.0 ohms at a certain environment, we are asked to now find the temperature of the medium. The method, you draw your thermometer for the Celsius scale, which is 100 degrees Celsius, and we have 0 degree Celsius. For the resistance thermometer, we have upper fixed point as 8.0 ohms, then the lower fixed point as 3.0 ohms. Then we have to find the temperature on the Celsius scale when the, thermometer, when the resistance thermometer reads 6.0 ohms. We still follow the same method, 100 minus 0 over theta minus 0. The same thing, 8 minus 3 over 6 minus 3. 100 minus 0 will give us 100, 7 minus 0 will give us theta. 8 minus 3 will give us 5. Y6 minus 3 will give us 3. So we can cross multiply. 5 times theta will give us 5 theta. Y3 times 100 will give us 300. So we're asked to find what? Theta. Then we both side by the coefficient of theta. We are left with what? Theta is equal to 300 over 5 which is 60 degree Celsius. Therefore, while the resistance thermometer reads 6 ohms, the temperature of the medium is 60 degree Celsius. Having done justice to this topic, I believe we can try this evaluation. A 40 thermometer registers 102 degree Celsius at 100 degree Celsius. If the thermometer has no zero error, what will it register at 55 degree Celsius? Next question. We are asked to find the reading, the reading on the 40 thermometer when the accurate thermometer records 55 degree Celsius. Remember, what will it register at 55 degree Celsius? Let me give you a hint. We are told that this thermometer, this 40 thermometer, has no zero error. That means that the lower fixed point is the same as the lower fixed point of the accurate thermometer. So please try the evaluation, get your answer, and as usual, type it in the comment section. Remember, if you have a question, don't hesitate to type it in the comment section. Thank you so much. See you in the next lesson.